Hi, Ben here. Electronic spectroscopy, or UV visible light absorption spectroscopy, is a very important part of the chemist's toolkit. The visible light is just one region of the electromagnetic spectrum, and this energy region is very similar to the energy required to move electrons around in molecules. For instance, in the vanadium hexa aqua complex, one of the partially filled metal centered electrons can be promoted to a higher energy molecular orbital by absorbing red light. We refer to the process of electrons moving between molecular orbitals as a transition. Electron transitions cause specific energies of light to be absorbed as light travels through a substance. In the case of the vanadium 2 hexaqua complex, the light coming through the solution appears blue when it comes out because other colours of light have been removed or absorbed as they cause electron transitions. There are lots of units used to quantify the energy of light, but the main one we need to know about is wavelength. Visible light has a wavelength between 300 to 700 nanometers. Red light is lower in energy at around 600 nanometers and blue light is closer to 400 nanometers. Ultraviolet light is wavelengths below about 400 nanometers to 200 nanometers. These energies can also be expressed in wave numbers or electron volts according to the equations on screen. Spectroscopists use different units in different contexts. If you measure how much light a sample absorbs at different wavelengths of light, you can take what is known as a UV visible light absorption spectrum. With this spectrum, you can learn about the relative energy levels of molecular orbitals in a sample. As you might imagine, this is a very powerful tool to characterize compounds, especially when combined with other spectroscopy like nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy or infrared spectroscopy. Today we're going to build on my previous video where we optimize the structure of a coordination complex and simulate the electronic absorption spectrum of a vanadium-2 hexaqua complex. We're going to do this by first carrying out a time-dependent DFT calculation using ORCA. This simulates lots of electronic transitions and then calculates the energies and relative probabilities of these transitions. ORCA can then use the results of this calculation to simulate an absorption spectrum for us, which we will plot and visualize using LibreOffice. I'll compare this to an experimental spectrum and I'll end by suggesting a few other experiments you can carry out to take these ideas further. If you'd like to work alongside me, I'll be using Orca and IQmul to generate the data and LibreOffice to plot the spectrum, so make sure you have those installed before we start. Links in the description, free to academic users. I'm also going to be using the optimized structure of the vanadium-2 hexaqua complex we generated in my last video as the basis of the calculation. Feel free to go back to that video and run the calculation yourself, but I've also included a link to a GitHub directory containing that data in the description if you just want to jump in right now. Ready? Let's do it. We'll start off in the same directory we ran the geometry optimization for the vanadium hexaqua ion in. We'll make a new folder here, which we will call tddft. And we'll copy over the vanadium.xyz file. So this is the optimized geometry file. It's very important that we use the optimized geometry, otherwise it's not gonna give us a meaningful result. Now we need to make the input file. So we'll open up any text editor. I tend to use Notepad because everyone has it. As in our previous input files, we'll start off by declaring the functional we want to use, which is the PVE0 functional, D3BJ. Then to make this calculation go a little quicker, we're going to use the ROJ, RIJ cos X approximation. And then to make this as accurate as we can, we're going to also try and model the solvent around the molecule. So we will use CPCM water as the keywords to simulate that. We're then going to put a percent sign and declare that we're doing TDDFT. N roots is the number of transitions that we'll look at. 50 is a perfectly fine number. The higher you make this number, the more accurate it will get, but also the more computationally expensive the calculation will get, i.e. it'll take longer. And then max dim is the expansion space we're going to give it. Five is a reasonable number to put in here. You can make this between five and 10. 10, the calculation gets, again, more expensive, i.e. it will take longer. We'll declare end to say these are all we care about for our TDDFT parameters. And finally, we'll declare the XYZ file where we can find the coordinates of the vanadium. So asterisk XYZ file. The first number is the charge, it's 2 plus. The second number is the multiplicity. Remember, that's number of unpaired electrons plus 1. We know we have three unpaired electrons, so we put in 4. 
and then we type the name of the file, which is vanadium.xyz. Final asterisk ends the input file, and this is all we need. So now if we go to File, Save As, we'll navigate to the tddft directory, and then we'll save this as tddft.imp, and we'll make sure not to save it as a text file. Then we'll just hit Save, and we can close the input file. We have everything we need here. We have the .imp and we have the .xyz. So now we'll go into the command line to run the time-dependent DFT. So we, a little shortcut in Windows 8 is we can click on this address bar, type cmd and hit enter. And the command is orca tddft.imp greater than tddft.out. And then if we hit enter, that calculation will run. It should take about 16 minutes. So you might want to pause the video as that goes on. Alternatively, you can find the output files in the GitHub directory linked in the description. When you can see that Orca's finished running that calculation, we'll move back to the directory. And we can see that lots of files have been generated. We'll have a quick look in the .out file. So this tddft.out file contains all the information that the calculation has generated. It summarizes the orbitals, it summarizes the transitions between orbitals. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to skim right to the bottom and we're going to confirm that Orca terminated normally. Then we're going to have a quick look at how long it took. And you'll see that it only took eight and a half minutes to run this calculation on my machine. So we can go back to the command line now, because what we're going to do for the purposes of this video is generate the absorption spectrum. And we'll do that with the following command. First, we type orca underscore map spc. Then we're going to type tddft.out to tell it to look in the .out file. We then declare the mode of the spectrum that we want it to map, and that's the absorption. And then we're going to declare the line broadening value. Don't worry too much about what that means at this point. And all that means is you put dash w 1000. And then if we hit enter, we will see that in our directory, we now have an abs.dat file. If we open this up in a text editor, we'll see that it's just a table full of numbers. So what we're going to do is we're going to make this into a plottable format by hitting control A to select everything. And then we're just going to copy this data. And we're going to move this into LibreOffice so that we can visualize it. So we'll just open up a LibreOffice calc spreadsheet now. And we'll paste the data into this spreadsheet. So this dialog box will come up on the text import. We want to make sure that we're using separated by and that we have um, merge delimiters tab and space selected. Now if we hit OK, we'll see that the data has been copied into this LibreOffice spreadsheet in a nice ordered table. But what do these numbers mean? This first column here is the energy of the light that's being used. In this case, it's in wave numbers, so we're going to need to convert that into nanometers. Each one of these columns then shows how light is absorbed in each direction. Now, we certainly don't have to worry about this for the purposes of today, and we're just going to use this first column. So please don't worry about these extra data points. In order to convert the energy from wave numbers into nanometers, we're going to move over to column G, and we're going to use the following formula. Hit equals, and then we want 1 over B1, and then we're going to multiply that by 10 million. That is seven orders of magnitude. If we hit enter, we'll see that the maths has been done. And if we double click on this square in the bottom right, we will automatically apply this formula to every other number in this column. And that has done the conversion from wave numbers in column B to nanometers in column G. Now we're just going to copy all of co column C across, just to make it easier for us to plot. And that's 
put into column H and then if we select these two columns and we go to insert and chart it's important that we move to XY scatter and lines only mode or it won't look anything like what we're hoping to see and if we hit finish and zoom out a little bit we will see an absorption spectrum. Now remember I said visible light is in the region between around 300 nanometers to 700 nanometers so this x-axis here needs adjusting further so if we go to format axis and x-axis then we can change the maximum and minimum and we'll change that to 300 and 800 if we hit OK, now we can see a strong peak here around 320 nanometers, a peak at 500, and a peak at and a peak at around 690 nanometers. I'll add some labels. So right-click and we click Insert Titles, then we can give it a name: Absorption Spectrum of Vanadium 2 Hexa aqua complex as simulated using orca the x-axis is wavelength nanometers y-axis is simply absorbance a we hit ok that will add all these titles and now this graph is pretty understandable if we now right click and go to export as image we can save this image in the directory we did the calculation. So here we have the simulated spectrum compared to an experimental spectrum. There are some differences, but overall there's pretty good agreement. If you'd like a deeper analysis, the .out file, link in the description, contains lots of information explaining the many transitions between molecular orbitals that cause the shape of this spectrum. You can use the techniques I've shown you in these two videos to perform a few experiments using your home computer. For example, what would happen if you change the water ligands to ammonia ligands? Do the molecular orbitals shift in energy? How much by? Do you see this change reflected in the absorption spectrum? What happens if you change the oxidation state of the metal, or if you change the metal species entirely? Does the geometry change? In this and my previous video, I've given you the tools to have a little bit of a play around and improve your understanding of coordination chemistry. Let me know in the comments what you think. I love to hear about the investigations my viewers get up to. Subscribe to encourage me to make more of this sort of thing.